What's up, y'all? Welcome to the Chess Giant. This is Solomon Rodell. And as you may have seen in my last video, I covered the top four traps for the Anglin Gambit player. It's really a response against d4, in which case Black plays this move of e5, simply giving up a pawn. And from there, has a lot of different ideas. However, in today's video, I'm really going to try to prepare you d4 players for this gambit and how to simply crush it. Okay, we're not going to be falling for these traps. Memorize these lines and variations, and the England gambit will never work against you. We are going to start off by taking this pawn on e5. And here, if a move like knight c6, we're simply going to continue with knight f3. Oftentimes here, black will play queen e7, right? Trying to double up on this pawn, in which case many players go with this move of bishop f4, which I actually recommend. But now against queen b4, we have to be extremely careful. A move like queen d2 simply loses on the spot. A move like c3 simply loses on the spot, right? I mean, there's so many moves here that get us in a ton of trouble. The best move, and it's not close, is bishop d2. But here, yet again, we have to be very careful. If we play bishop c3, black is winning that after bishop b4. Instead, we're going to play the key move here of knight c3. Okay, bringing that knight out. We're sitting at even material. But notice here, black has given up one of their centralized pawns, and they've kind of just thrown their queen all the way into b2. And now we're looking at rook b1 ideas, kicking it out with potential knight b5 ideas in the future as well. There's really two moves here for black that seem scary, and that's knight b4 as well as bishop b4. Let's first take a look at this move of bishop b4. Well, in this case, we're simply going to continue with rook b1, right? Kick this queen out and continue with knight d5. Centralize this minor piece. We're now putting a ton of pressure on that dark squared bishop. And here, if a move like bishop takes d2, okay, we'll simply take back with the queen. And following king d8, we're not going to play queen g5 with check. Okay, it may be tempting to play queen g5 followed by queen captures on g7, but this is actually another trap that the England Gambit player has, as we covered in the last video. Instead, here, we're just going to play e4. Okay, at move 10, play e4. And okay, I mean, if black wants to take on a2, that's completely fine. We're going to play rook d1. We are down one pawn of material, but y'all, this king on d8 is extremely vulnerable to attack. We have a rook and a queen aimed directly at it. This knight on d5 ain't going anywhere anytime soon. And we have very natural developmental chess on the way. And on top of that, queen f4 ideas really eyeing the pawn on f7 white here with a one position. So y'all here, if you see bishop takes d2 followed by king d8, your opponent is probably trying to get you to play queen g5 with check. In that case, play cool, play e4, rook d1, get this king to safety, develop your pieces, and go after that king once you're fully developed. What happens if black just plays a move like bishop a5 here though? I mean, here we were putting a ton of pressure on that minor piece and we were threatening knight takes c7 ideas with check. Here this bishop move seems to stop both but we're now going to activate our rook with rook b5 yet again, putting a ton of pressure on that bishop. And here, if the bishop wants to take on d2, okay, we'll gladly capture back and be threatening knight takes c7 with check. And here, if bishop b6, again, we want to take this pawn, but obviously the bishop would capture back. So why not remove it with our rook and keep our knight here? We are giving up the exchange, but in this case, we're getting a pawn and we're going to get that rook back. If I move here like queen takes a8, we can play queen b1, both defending our a2 pawn and attacking the double isolated pawn on b6. Here white up a point and simply with a winning position. So y'all, that covers this move of bishop b4. If you see this move, don't fret, don't freak out. Just play rook b1, kick this queen back, and then continue with knight d5, right? Putting a ton of pressure on that minor piece and eyeing the square on c7. What about the move of knight b4? Well, it may be very tempting to just play rook c1, but notice if we do play this move, we're going to lose our pawn on a2, and black's going to go up a little bit of material there. Instead, I recommend this option of knight d4, right? This really holds down the pawn on c2, and many of you are probably wondering, why can't black just kick this knight around? Well, it actually turns out the best move here for black is c6, but let's just say black plays a move like bishop c5 or even c5 trying to kick our knight. Well, we're not going to move the knight. Instead, we're just going to play this move of rook b1. If you want to take my knight, I'll gladly take your queen off the board. And here, if I move like queen a3, we have knight db5 yet again, putting pressure on this queen. If I move like queen a5, just play a quiet option here. Why not just play a3, right? Try to kick this knight around. If this knight doesn't move, thank you for the knight. And if it does move, we can now play knight d5. I mean, talk about a crushing position, y'all. We're attacking the queen. Knight c7 is on the way. And black's position is simply resignable. So again, y'all, the key move against knight b4, don't bring the rook over, but instead just play knight d4, which does two things. First off, it defends the pawn 
on c2, and it also threatens rook b1 followed by knight b5 ideas, right? Attacking the queen and the pawn on c7. So let's say here black plays the best option of c6, keeping our knight out of b5. Well, in this case, we can actually just continue with the move like e4, right? I mean, yet again, black cannot kick this knight around. In fact, if they do try right now with bishop c5, we can play rook b1. And if a move like queen a3, continue with rook b3. Play active chess, develop, 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 kick this queen around. Queen a5 is played here, and we have knight f5, right? Putting some pressure on g7 if a move like king f8. I mean, you have a king on f8. And if a move like g6, we can play knight d6 with check. Yet again, crushing game for white. A huge edge in development. We're only a couple moves away from castling. This pawn on d6 is an absolute monster. We're putting pressure on b4. And really, I mean, look at black's pieces, right? This queen is very awkwardly placed. In fact, maybe it wouldn't be too bad if it didn't have to babysit this knight. But this queen is really having to hold on to this knight, which can barely even move at the moment. In fact, I don't think it can without getting captured or lost. I mean, even if black tries to take on a2, we have, uh, you know, simple queen a1 ideas there pinning the knight to the queen. This bishop on c8 is one of the worst bishops I've seen in quite a long time. And I guess you could argue that this knight can come to f6, but even then, going forward, I mean, we're going to have e5 options in the air. And if you castle kingside, your dark squares are going to be extremely weak, and we have a dark squared bishop. All that to say, I mean, I don't think it's going to be very long before black throws in the towel. Thank you guys for watching today's video, and special thanks to everyone who has become a patron. My goal is to make this chess thing go full time, and you're all helping me create better chess content and drop it more often. If you'd like to see my hippopotamus defense playlist, click that playlist to the left. If you'd like to see my entire openings playlist, click that playlist to the right. Leave a comment down below to let me know what other videos I'd like to see covered on this channel. And as always, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.